Crystal is a general purpose, object-oriented programming language with syntax inspired by the language Ruby. Unlike Ruby, however, Crystal is a compiled language with decent performance, static type checking, concurrency, and other modern features, all of which make it a really interesting language to use. But I don't think it's ready for production just yet. Before I go into why, let's look at some of the features I think makes Crystal such an interesting and fun language to learn. To get started with Crystal, first install it as per the instructions for your operating system. I'm using Arch, by the way, so I'll install using Pac-Man. Next, we can write Crystal code in a file that ends in the .cr extension. Here's how to write good old hello world. To run the code, we then use the Crystal command with the file name. I know, I promised interesting. Let me kick it up a notch. Crystal provides some commonly used data structures out of the box. Arrays are used to store items in a list that can dynamically grow. Sets are used for storing a collection of unique elements. And hashes, which are used to store key value pairs. One major difference when compared to Ruby is that the value types of these containers are set when we initialize them, which allows the compiler to check for type safety. Functions are written similar to how they are in Ruby. They are defined using both the def and end keywords. One major difference when compared to Ruby is that we're able to specify the expected type of our input parameters. This is called type restriction and enables greater type safety when defining functions and helps to make crystal code more readable. In addition to the input parameters, we're also able to specify a type for the return value, which can be useful to help the compiler understand what it should return. When running our Fibonacci function without this, we end up with an arithmetic overflow. Setting the type to a 64-bit integer allows our code to work as expected. Functions can also be overloaded, which enables using different type parameters for inputs. Crystal is an object-oriented language, which means that classes are used throughout. In fact, similar to Ruby, everything is an object in Crystal, which means that everything has a type and can respond to methods. To define a class, we use the class keyword, followed by the name of the type that we want. We can then define methods and attributes that instances of our class will have. To create an instance of a class, we use the new keyword. As with any object-oriented language, Crystal also provides support for inheritance and polymorphism. If inheritance makes you wince, there's also abstract types that one can inherit from, which are similar to interfaces in other languages, such as Java or Go. In addition to classes, Crystal also provides the struct type. Structs are very similar to classes, except for one major difference. They are allocated on the stack instead of the heap. This means that they're also passed by value or copied instead of passed by reference. Crystal also provides support for enums, which can be used to define a set of named values. Because everything in Crystal is an object, this also applies to enums. Therefore, as well as having a type, they are able to define methods. Crystal provides a concept known as modules, which are used for two purposes. The first is the namespacing of other types, methods, or constants. And the second is as a partial type that can be mixed into other types. To define a module, you first use the module keyword, followed by the module name. We can then use this module as is with encapsulation or include it into another type to mix in the methods. Crystal also supports the use of generics, which allows for writing code that can operate on different types without sacrificing type safety. We've already used generic types with our collections and we can easily define our own when declaring our class. With our generic class defined, we can go ahead and create different instances which specify the concrete type associated. Nil handling is perhaps one of my favorite features of Crystal. As Crystal aims to be a safe language, the compiler will throw an error for any usage of potential nil types that are unchecked before use. It's also possible to define a function that may return a nil by using the or nil operator in our return type. This acts similar to the optional or maybe types found in other languages. Dependencies can be managed through the use of the shards package manager. Shards first needs to be installed as per the instructions for your operating system. With shards installed, the init command will create a shard.yaml at the project root. We can then edit the YAML file to add dependencies to our project. As shards is a decentralized package manager, we can load any Git repository, such as found on GitHub or GitLab, as a dependency to our project. With our dependency added, we can then use the shards install command to pull them down and build them. We can then use our new dependency with the require keyword, which will import the package into our file. 
By also setting up our target in the shard.yaml, we can use the shards build and run commands with our project. Concurrency is provided out of the box with the use of fibers and channels. Fibers are a form of green threads in Crystal, similar to GoRoutines in Go or CoRoutines in Kotlin. Starting a new fiber is as simple as using the spawn keyword. Cross-fiber communication can be achieved using channels, which allows data to be sent from one fiber to another. Given all the features I've mentioned, Crystal feels like a fantastic language to start using right away. But as I mentioned, I don't think it's ready for production. Let me explain why. So whilst Crystal provides native support for concurrency, it doesn't have any parallel processing out of the box. This means that whilst we have concurrent execution, it's still performed on a single thread, which means that fibers cannot be used to improve the performance of CPU-bound applications. Now there is a preview flag that one can use to build their code which will enable multi-threaded concurrency, which does work, kind of. This is still very much in beta, however, and has been since 2019. The second reason I don't think Crystal is ready for production is the lack of maturity in the ecosystem. Tooling such as order completion is still in active development, and whilst an LSP server does exist in the form of Crystalline, it's still very much in development. Other tooling such as syntax highlighting and documentation does exist, but it's not as mature as I would hope it to be, especially from a modern language. Now I think the ecosystem is mature enough that you can get by, but it's just gonna make the development experience less than ideal. And the biggest reason I think to hold off on using Crystal in production is the lack of sponsorship from any big companies. Whilst I dislike that this is even a thing, having a large tech company invested in our language, even just by using it, means that the language is likely to have constant development resources allocated. Crystal, at the moment, is very much backed by the community, which makes it challenging to guarantee whether or not the language will continue to be maintained and developed upon. Therefore, using it in production is a risk, one that does not really have a worthwhile reward at this time. Ultimately, I think Crystal is a really interesting language and I'd love to see it grow into its full potential. Until that time, however, I'll be using it mainly with hobby projects and won't rely on it for production just yet. <laughs>